How many times have you not imagined a time machine that would allow you to go back in time and change some things? That would allow you to visit ancient civilizations that have already disappeared or even be able to see living dinosaurs? How many times have you not thought about the idea of being able to travel to the future, to be able to know what human civilization will be like in a few years? What will the planet Earth and its beings will be like and what will the universe itself would be like in its entirety? Hi, and welcome to Ask for Science, and there is a very easy way to be able to travel in time, and that is to do nothing. Right now, you're traveling into the future at the speed of one second per second, but this method of time travel is pretty boring. To make it more fun, we should talk about relativity. Einstein's theory of relativity says that relative to an observer who's stationary, time itself passes more slowly for rapid moving bodies. For example, the hands of a hypothetical superfast clock that begins to move faster than another clock would seem to go, each time, slower, and as they increase their speed and approach the speed of light, they would appear to have come to a complete stop. Imagine the case of two twin brothers who are saying goodbye today in a space center. Both are obviously the same age, but one of them is about to embark on a 10-year-long journey throughout space. Let's now pass 10 years. When the twin who has been traveling for 10 years at speeds close to the speed of light is reunited with his brother, sees that the latter is much older than him. And it's normal, because for the twin who has remained on Earth, time has gone much faster and many more years have passed. This is what is called time dilation. Although this story is science fiction, because something like this can't happen, right? Well, actually, yes. The best experiment that demonstrates the truth of the effect of time dilation was not carried out with a pair of twins, but with two identical clocks. In 1971, an atomic clock, the most accurate type of clock in existence, was put aboard a commercial airplane. Before taking off, the same time was synchronized to an identical one. This clock stayed still on the surface of the Earth, and the other one was flying for more than 40 hours. The plane with the clock, after a long journey, landed on the same point of departure. The two clocks were then taken and compared, and it was observed that the clock that had been left on the ground had advanced 273 nanoseconds more. But it couldn't have gotten ahead because these clocks are extremely precise. So really what happened is that the clock that was left on the plane actually traveled in the future. But this effect has been observed many times more since the verification was made in 1971. Astronauts carrying instruments up to the International Space Station have watched their clocks drift out of sync with those on Earth as the days on the station go by. In fact, an astronaut who spends six months on the International Space Station will be, when he returns to Earth, 0.007 seconds younger than if he had stayed on it. It has also been observed that artificial satellites, which are flying above our heads, also travel into the future. So now, all of them have their clocks modified so that time passes more slowly and they don't go out of sync with the time on the surface of the Earth. The problem with all of this is that we're talking about nanoseconds, and although the fact that this phenomenon occurs is already fascinating, it remains to be seen if it's possible to travel not nanoseconds, but years into the future. Fortunately, mathematics have the solution. The Lorentz factor is defined as a term that measures the magnitude of time variation for different observers. In it, v is the speed of an object, for example a spaceship, and c is the speed of light in a vacuum. Thanks to this equation, we know that if we want to increase its value, that is, if we want to travel to the future, we must increase v. We must increase the speed. So at the end, everything comes down to this. If you want to travel to the future, you must go fast. You really must go very fast. And obviously, we as people cannot do much. But machines can help us a lot to reach very high speeds. If we could get a machine that went really fast, then we would have a time machine. But how fast does a machine have to go to allow us to travel far into the future? In reality, if we managed to build a machine or a ship that went 90% of the speed of light, we would only go 
2.3 times faster than the normal time on Earth. In other words, even going at these extreme speeds, we would only be able to go twice as fast as time passes on Earth. So, if you really wanted to make an interesting journey, you would need to go much faster. It is evident that the construction of a ship of this type, or rather, of this time machine, is currently beyond the technical possibilities of our civilization. However, there are examples that show that the idea is totally correct. On Earth, we receive particles that come from the center of our galaxy at distances that like takes thousands of years to travel. That is, these particles were produced thousands of Earth years ago. However, these particles cannot withstand a trip of even one minute since they disintegrate in a matter of seconds after being created. How do we explain this paradox? Making use of time dilation. The particles have been accelerated to speeds so close to the speed of light that they had only aged a few seconds while thousands of years had elapsed on Earth. Fascinating. In short, we can travel to the future, but for this we need a ship that travels at very high speeds. But there is a second way to travel to the future, and this is due to gravitational dilation. This effect means that in bodies that are in areas with a higher gravitational potential, time passes more slowly than in areas where the gravitational potential is lower. This effect is responsible for your head being older than your feet, because your feet, being closer to the ground than your head, travel to the future with respect to your head. In this case, the Earth is the one that creates the gravitational potential, but the difference is again very small. But there are certain areas of the universe where this effect is much greater, like for example, black holes. If an object was orbiting a black hole very close for a few hours, it would really have been years for an object that was outside the gravitational field of the black hole. So if we manage to put the two effects together, that is, we managed to build a ship that was capable of reaching speeds close to the speed of light, and that at the same time was capable of orbiting a black hole, then we would have a true time machine towards the future. But what about the past? Well, this is a little bit more complicated. One of the proposed ideas to travel to the past is to take advantage of a wormhole. A wormhole is a physical concept that is theoretically possible, but has not yet been demonstrated in practice. It's really about two holes in space-time far apart from each other that are interconnected. The idea would be to be able to create one of them and take one of the two ends and accelerate it to the speed of light. The other one we should leave still, which would, as we have said before, make the one traveling at the speed of light travel into the future with respect to the one standing still. The point is that the holes would continue to be connected in such a way that if someone entered through the end of the future, would come out at the end of the past. And this would be traveling into the past. But one of the important limitations of this hypothetical time machine is that we could only travel at most until the moment in which the machine was created, never further back. That is believed to be the possible solution to Hawking's paradox, which asks, why haven't we had visitors from the future if such a machine is possible? However, the possibility of a journey into the past generates many other paradoxes, one of them, the best known, is that the fact that someone could travel to the past would mean that someone could meet their grandfather and kill him. This would mean that, theoretically, that someone could not continue to exist. And that is believed to be a sign that time travel into the past really is impossible. Although, however, there is also the possibility that at the time of making the trip to the past, a parallel universe was generated, in such a way that there would be a universe with a grandfather and another one without, thus solving many of the paradoxes. Journeys into the past may indeed be impossible, but at least journeys into the future are possible. It remains to be seen if in the future we're capable of developing the technology necessary to make trips of more than a few nanoseconds. Don't be sad though, for now, you have traveled a few minutes since the video started. Welcome to the future. Thank you very much for watching the video and goodbye.